Germany's Frankfurt, AP, oil prices increased on Monday as the first significant sanctions to restrict Russia's oil revenues due to the conflict in Ukraine came into effect. With the new sanctions and the potential for Russian reprisal, the amount of petroleum that could be lost to the world economy is uncertain. A day after the OPEC Plus alliance of oil producers, which includes Russia, made no revisions to supply plans since the impact of the new limitations on Russian oil is not yet obvious, international benchmark Brent crude increased 2% to $87.30 per barrel. Beginning on Monday, the group of seven democracies and the EU will put an embargo on most Russian oil and a $60 per barrel price ceiling on Russian shipments to other nations. Simone Tagliapietra, an energy policy analyst at the Bruegel think tank in Brussels, tweeted that it had taken a while for a response to Putin's war in Ukraine to materialize. Western governments are treading a tight line between attempting to reduce Russia's oil income and preventing an oil scarcity that would lead to a price surge and exacerbate the inflation that is wreaking havoc on economies and harming consumers everywhere. However, Russia has declared that it will not supply oil to nations who uphold the cap, which may remove oil from the market and drive up energy prices, including the price of gasoline at the pump. A number of sanctions have been imposed on Russia by the US, EU, and allies in response to bank and financial activities, technology imports, and people with connections to the regime. But up until this point, most of those sanctions haven't specifically targeted oil and natural gas, the Kremlin's two greatest sources of revenue. Before the war, Europe was largely dependent on Russian oil and natural gas, therefore it has been difficult to locate replacement sources. Russian coal imports were previously prohibited by the EU, and the US and the UK stopped their limited imports of Russian oil, but those actions had much less of an economic impact. How much of the oil that was originally sold to Europe can be redirected is one unknowable. Many of those Russian barrels, but not all of them, analysts predict, will find new homes in the coming months, reducing supply and driving up prices. Subramanyam Jayashankar, the foreign minister of India, said on Monday that the nation would continue to purchase oil from Russia in order to prioritize its own energy requirements. India hasn't agreed to the G7 pricing cap as of yet either. To minimize disruption on the oil markets, the cap has a grace period for oil that was loaded before Monday and reaches its destination before January 19. The goal is to maintain Russian oil production while decreasing Kremlin revenue, albeit the immediate impact may be minimal because Russian oil was already trading close to the cap's fixed price. Although the cap might be tightened later, the US and Europe chose to lean more toward preventing a price surge than causing financial trouble in Russia. On Monday, Franz Timmermans, vice president of the European Commission, said, we agree that we should not disturb the global oil markets. That would also be of no use to us. Because of this, the EU determined that $60 per barrel was the right price. The response from Russia is one unknown. If it follows through on a threat to stop selling oil to nations that adhere to the cap, that may restrict supply and drive up prices, which would be advantageous to Russia to the degree that it can get through the constraints. By deploying dark fleet tankers with ambiguous ownership and ship-to-ship -ship transfers of oil to tankers with oil of comparable quality to conceal its origin, Russia might adopt techniques similar to those used by Iran and Venezuela to evade sanctions. Additionally, Russia and China might arrange their own insurance. According to experts on sanctions, these actions will result in higher costs for Russia.